Hi, I'm Dr. Catherine. Camp Praxis is a science specialized center for IGCSE and A level. Let's start our experiment now. Hello, welcome to Camp Praxis. In this video, we'll be covering question 1 from October November 2022, paper 3, variant 3. In this experiment, we'll determine the percentage mass of iron in FA1, an unknown compound. You will first prepare a solution of the compound, then carry out a titration using acidified potassium manganate solution. The end point of the titration is when the color of the solution becomes a permanent pale pink color. You are provided with three chemicals, which is FA1, a sample of the unknown compound, FA2, 0.01 mole per dm cube of acidified potassium manganate solution, and FA3, which is dilute sulfuric acid. Now we'll move straight into the experiment. For the first part of the experiment, we'll start with preparing a solution. First, we'll weigh the sample of FA1 and its container. Next, we'll add all the FA1 into a 250 cm cube beaker. Now, we'll weigh the container with the residue. Now, we'll add some distilled water into the beaker. Stir the solid until it dissolves. Now we'll pour the contents from the beaker into a 250 cm cube volumetric bra. Now rinse the beaker with some distilled water. And add the washings into the volumetric bar. Now, add the distilled water carefully into the volumetric bar until it reaches the graduation mark. Now we can start to prepare for a titration. First, we'll fill in the burette with FA2. When the knob on the burette is horizontal, it means that the burette is closed. When you fill in your burette, it's quite likely that some air bubbles will remain at the bottom. What you can do is to open the burette and let the air bubble flow out. To open the burette, you can just turn the knob and make it vertical. The initial reading for the burette is about 1.65 cm cube. After filling up our burette, we'll have to pipette 25 cm cube of FA4 into a conical flask. Before that, we'll pour out some FA4 into an empty beaker. First, place the end of the pipette into the beaker. Attach your pipette with a pipette filler. First, press A and empty out the air from the pipette bowl. Now, you should press S to take the solution up from the beaker. Pick up the solution until it reaches the zero mark. Now you can empty the solution into the conical flask by pressing E. Using a 25 cm cube measuring cylinder, we'll measure 15 cm cube of FA3. Now we'll add the FA3 into the conical flask. Now we can start with the titration. You'll notice that the purple color of the certified potassium magnet solution is being decolorized. The end point of this titration is where the solution turns into a light permanent pink color. When you're doing titration, you can store the conical flask in a circular motion. Now 
Now the end point is reached and you can turn off the burette. The final reading of the burette is about 24.55 cm3. After the experiment, we crop all the readings in a table. Make sure that your table includes headings and units. The mass of FA1 added can be calculated using the mass of FA1 of the container minus the mass of residue with the container. The answer will be 5.03 grams. Now, record all your burette readings. Make sure that your table includes initial and final burette reading and the tighter volume. You can calculate the tighter volume using the final burette reading minus the initial burette reading. Make sure that you record all your burette readings to two decimal places and make sure to include the units which is cm3. Repeat your titration until you obtain concordant results. This means that you should have two or more tighter volumes with less than 0.1 cm3 apart. Also remember to fill in the value for your rough titer above. Using our titration results, we can calculate the mean titer volume needed to react with 25 cm3 of FA4. To find the mean value, we'll use both our titer volumes divided by 2. Make sure to only include your concordant titers in your calculations. Now we'll move on to part C. Make sure that you record all your answers in part C to about 3 significant figures. For question 2, we'll calculate the amount in moles of magnetic ions in the volume recorded in B. For this question, we'll use the formula N equals to CV over 1000. The value of C is given which is 0.01 and the value of V is the calculated value of mean tidal volume which is 22.90 cm3. The final answer will be 2.29 times 10 to the power of negative 4 moles. Moving on to question 3, we'll calculate the amount in moles of iron 2 plus ions in the weight sample of Fa1. By looking at the equation, we'll notice that 1 mole of magnetic ions reacts with 5 moles of iron 2 plus ions. So as you calculate the number of moles of iron 2 plus ions, we can just use the number of moles of magnetic ions times 5. At the start of the experiment, we dissolved all the Fa1 in a 250cm3 volumetric flask. Therefore, we'll times this value by 10. This way, we can find the number of moles of iron 2 plus ions in a 250cm3 solution. Your final answer will be 1.15 times 10 to the power of negative 2 moles. For question 4, we'll calculate the percentage by mass of iron in Fa1. To do this, we'll use the formula mass equals the number of moles times relative atomic mass. The number of moles is the value that we've calculated in the previous question, which is 1.15 times 10 to the power of negative 2, and the relative atomic mass of iron is 55.8. You'll get an answer of 0.639 grams. To calculate the percentage by mass of iron, we use the mass of iron over the total mass of Fa1 times 100%. You get a final answer of 12.7%. Now we'll move on to part D. A student has carried out the same experiment as in part A. The student receives a sample of Fa1 in a container with a lid. The student records the initial mass of the container with its lid with the sample of Fa1. Then the student records the mass of the container with the residue but forgets to replace the lid. How would this error alter the student's answer in part C question 4? Explain your answer. If the student forgot to replace the lid, the mass of residue with the container will seem lower and the mass of Fa1 added will seem higher. If the mass of Fa1 added was higher, the calculated percentage by mass of iron will be lower. Answer will be the apparent mass of Fa1 is higher, so the calculated percentage by mass of iron is lower. Moving on to part E, state two assumptions that have been made in calculating the percentage by mass of iron in Fa1. The first assumption is that all the iron present is Fe2+, not Fe3+. Besides that, only Fe2+, reacts with KMnO4. No impurities are present to react with acidified potassium manganate solution. Now we're done with part E and this will be the end of question 1.